and welcome to this another edition of the Ancient Landmark. My name is Jared Jacobs, and I'm so thankful to be with you, so glad we have this opportunity to once again open up God's Word and to study together. We encourage you, if you will, to get a Bible out and follow along with the things we're going to study as we spend time together in the Book of God. We encourage you to get a piece of paper out if you'd like, take any notes you'd like to take. If you have any questions at all, you can certainly call me or text me at 589-4167. You can uh, contact us through the website, caneyvillechurchofchrist.com. Send us an email or send a message through Facebook. You can go to Caneyville Church of Christ on Facebook and then write us a message. Uh, send us something that way if you'd like. If you have any Bible questions at all about the subject we're going to study right now, or about any other Bible-related subject. Please know that you're welcome to call or, or text or send a message, whatever, and uh, to discuss these things of a spiritual nature. Our, our work and our intention and our goal is to talk about God's Word and to show folks God's plan for salvation and God's plan for our lives, that we might uh, successfully make it from earth to heaven. And what I'd like for us to do is talk about a socially accepted sin, you might say. That is to say, it's something that God has condemned in his Bible, and yet the world says that it's okay to do. And I know there's a lot of things that fit in that category anymore, unfortunately. Uh, but what I want us to talk about is the subject of drinking and social drinking. You want to talk about the consumption of alcohol? Uh, that is something that a lot of folks just uh, they deem it to be okay. They deem it that it's fine. It's okay to do. I mean, uh, so many times people say, well, you know, you can drink. Just promise you won't get drunk. Well, I don't know how that's going to happen seeing that with every drink you take, you're getting more and more and more drunk. But nevertheless, or or the old uh, commercials used to be on. I don't, I don't see them much anymore, but used to. There was old commercials. They'd say, think when you drink. Remember those commercials? And they talk about think when you drink. And I always thought, well, uh, you know, if you start uh, drinking like that, you're not going to be able to think because uh, drinking, of course, uh, affects your mental capacity. It's been said that uh, by those who, who know about this and have studied this, that the time that one takes a drink, within 30 seconds, it's already affected your brain. And that's mainly because alcohol uh, doesn't have to go through the digestive process. Once it hits your stomach, it, it, it filters out into the circulatory system. And so within about 30 seconds or so, your mind is already affected by the alcohol that you've drunk. And so that old adage saying, think when you drink and so forth, is really kind of a joke because uh, you can't do that. The more you drink, the less you think. And that's the problem. And so many times, folks want to justify their drinking. They want to have, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, business lunch, and so we have to have our drink at the business lunch. We, uh, you know, you go out to eat. Well, we're going to have red wine or white wine with what we what we eat, or so forth, or or on and on that goes. And uh, here we find that that really, when you look into Scripture, the Bible is con uh, it condemns that type of thing. You know, it's a lack of understanding, though, that's got us into this mess. That's the problem. It's a lack of understanding. When we think about it, I know uh, one fella, he went through the Bible and looked up the word wine in the Bible. And uh, and the fella, whenever he got done, he said, well, he said, I see that there's, uh, you know, passages that condemn it. And then it seem like there's passages that talk about drinking wine as being okay, but then there's some that condemn drinking wine, so... Uh, you know, just um, kind of do the best you can. And that was kind of his answer to it. And like I said, it's a pretty sorry Bible study in that case because uh, just saying that is not enough. Just saying uh, what he did, well, you can do it or don't do it, just kind of use your best judgment, really that's not the answer. There is an answer. Whenever you go into the Bible and you begin to read and study, you're going to see that the word wine is, is a generic or a general term. Now, that's true in the Old Testament. That's true in the New Testament. Um, it can mean an alcoholic beverage. It can. It can also mean just juice. And that's the thing. You could have grape juice, but the Bible term would be wine for that. And so you say, well, how can I tell? Well, you have to tell by the context. 
The word wine in the Bible, now, now not in the English language, I know, but if you're talking about the Hebrew language, the Greek language concerning wine, when you're talking about that, uh, the, Bible say, the Bible's term for that is very general or generic. It's kind of like us saying groceries. If I use the term groceries, what do I mean? I mean, do I mean meat, vegetables, fruit, do I mean like milk and juice? I mean, what do I mean when I say groceries? Do I mean chips and, and snacks and, and, you know, desserts and things? Or I mean, what do I mean by that? Well, the context would bring that out, wouldn't it? If I use the term groceries, if I use the term furniture, furniture is a general term. What does furniture mean? Does furniture mean a chair or a couch or a table? I mean, what does that mean exactly? Uh, you won't know until you know the context of our discussion. And same thing with automobile. If I use the term automobile, what do I mean? Do I mean a car, truck, van? I mean, I, what am I talking about when I say automobile? And on and on down the list you can go with that. Well, that's the idea behind that word wine in the Bible. And like I said, I know in our English terms we mean something pretty specific, but not in the Bible. The Hebrew word is yayin, Y-A-Y-I-N, or uh, oinos, O-I-N-O-S, that's the Greek term. Koine Greek is oinos, O-I-N-O-S. And those terms are general terms. It doesn't mean a specific, uh, this is alcohol type situation. It can mean alcohol or it can mean some juice. And so we have to look into the scripture. We have to look into the context to figure that out. I will say there's another term that is used as well. And that term is the term strong drink. Now, the Bible does use the term strong drink. And when the Bible uses the term strong drink, then that's alcohol. Or sometimes it'll use the word mixed, mixed drinks. Sometimes it's strong drink. Sometimes it's mixed drinks. Mixed drinks means that it's, that it's alcohol mixed with something else. It's alcohol, a lot of times alcohol mixed with a drug. And so some, some other type of a drug that goes with it to really get you high. Well, in that case, when the Bible uses the term mixed drinks, then that's a sin, of course. And strong drink, that's also a term that's used. And uh, I think it's interesting as we study on that because the more you do your study into uh, dr the drinks of the Bible, the wines of the Bible, and so forth, whenever you come across that term strong drink, uh, you're talking about something pretty potent. And what I find interesting is that the term strong drink of the Bible really equates with about anything that we use or sell today in the stores, at least in in America. You know, you, you look today and and you'll see, uh, you know, such things as gin. Gin is 51% alcohol. That's 100 proof. Uh, you can talk about brandy. Brandy is 53%. Rum is, is 53%. Uh, whiskey is 54% alcohol. And that's what that's what composes that those drinks. And and like I said, you, we could talk about others as well. But these make our point to show that that those in Bible terms a strong drink. You see, the Bible when the Bible talks about someone having wine, even the fermented wine, um, grape juice will ferment into wine. But the uh, those who know about it say so if you just would, would ferment the grape juice itself, around 14%, around 14% is about it. Uh, the Just the natural juices and so forth doing its thing and fermenting whenever you try to make wine. And by the way, you do make wine. It's not just a matter of, of pouring wine into some container and waiting and all of a sudden it turns into wine, or grape juice, I mean. It's not grape juice poured into a container and then you wait for a while, and then it's wine. That's not wine making, and you'll not get wine that way. You have to make it. You have to try to do it, and you have to work at it. But for those who would make this wine and have it in this, you know, have it and 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 get it going, the natural process about fourteen percent is really all you get. So if you have a have a drink like brandy that's over fifty percent alcohol, then you had to do something else to get it to that point. It wasn't just waiting in the natural processes of, of winemaking taking place. Because wine, like I said, only gets to like 
And so that's that's the fermented. So even at that, when the Bible talks about strong drink, I mean, you go down the list of about any drink today you want to talk about, and it's going to be in the Bible category of strong drink or even mixed drinks, because if it's mixed with some other drug. With that, in, with that in mind, then, about anything you want to talk about is uh, sinful before God. We shouldn't be drinking that stuff. That shouldn't be going into our bodies, okay? And I'm going to show you this from the Bible here in just a moment, that God has condemned that. But I want you to understand some of the, some of the background behind it and some of this basis here first. Um, the idea, and another history thing real quick, the idea of distilleries or distilling drinks and, of course, distilleries are well-known and so forth. But the idea of distilling alcohol and so forth uh, was unknown in Bible days. That was invented around the 9th or 10th century A.D. And it was invented by the, by the Arabs, the Muslims and such. They're the ones that did that. And so going back in time then to Bible days in the 1st century and, and in all the B.C. time, they didn't even know what that was. So you're not talking about distilled drinks. You're not talking about distilled alcohol. You're not talking about any of those things at all because they didn't even have that back then. But they did have other processes, obviously, to make fermented drinks, and um, that, was, that was part of it. But again, using that term wine, we have to see what the context is because not every time is wine to, to be considered alcohol it's just to be considered juice. And I'll give you an example. In the book of Isaiah chapter 16 and verse 10, whenever he talks about the, the, those who would tread, tread out the wine in the press. Isaiah 16 verse 10, those who would tread out the wine in the press. Well, whenever you're getting that out of the press, it's not uh, fermented alcohol then. It's not fermented wine at that point. It's fresh juice. But the term used was they treaded out the wine. Well, they treaded it in the press. That would have been fresh juice. Isaiah 65 and verse number 8 is another example where he talks about new wine. New wine that's found in the cluster. Well, new wine found in a cluster, that's not alcohol. New wine in the cluster, that's the cluster of grapes and it's been squeezed out. Okay, that's just fresh juice again. But again, the term, Bible term was wine. And so we have to go by what the uh, passage says. Matthew 26, verse 28 and 29, whenever Jesus referred to the fruit of the vine. Somebody says, oh, fruit of the vine. Well, fruit of the vine, that could be anything. No, fruit of the vine literally means, literally, it, it's the word staphyl, literally means the blood of the grape. The blood of the grape, guess what? That's fresh juice. The blood of the grape, that's the fruit of the vine. Uh, again, the treading it out and the new wine and so forth like that. Now that would be fresh juice. So I'm just showing you that there are times in the Bible when the t that term wine just means fresh juice. It doesn't mean alcohol. Now again, there are times when that is so. Uh, obviously, uh, in the book of Genesis 9.21, talks about Noah and how he drank wine and was drunken. Well, Noah drank wine and he got drunk. Okay, well, that's obviously alcohol then, isn't it? That wasn't just somebody drinking fresh juice. He drank it and he got drunk. And you'll see this uh, again and again. You'll see it in Proverbs 23 and more on that, uh, perhaps, as we can get to it. Uh, Proverbs 23, 29 and 30 talks about men getting drunk. And how that at the last it biteth like a serpent, stingeth like an adder. Well, if it's biting like a serpent, stinging like an adder, uh, that's not juice, okay? That is, that is alcohol. And so, yes, there are differences, and, and we need to respect those differences as the Bible talks about it and not just assume, well, every time I read the word wine, that must mean alcohol in the Bible. No. What does the context say? Now, again, does, does the Bible say that uh, there is wine that is fermented wine, alcoholic wine, and we need to stay away from it? Absolutely. In Proverbs 20 and verse 1, he says there that wine is a mocker. Strong drink. Remember we talking about strong drink a while ago? Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Well, if you're not wise, what are you? 
Okay? He says wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. He talks about how that it's not for kings. Proverbs 31, 4 through 5. It's not for kings, O Lemuel, to drink wine. They're not to be like that. Don't do that. And again, that's, that's some Old Testament. That's just a few Old Testament verses. That's not all of them, I promise. You go into the New Testament and you'll see the same thing. The idea of drinking wine, that is drinking alcohol, is condemned by God. It's condemned all the way through. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 4, and I'll give you one example here. In 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse number 3, he talks about drinking alcohol, drinking wine. In 1 Peter chapter 4, and there the verse is number 3. You'll notice here that he says, For the time past of our lives may have suffices, he said, when we have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Well, what did we do when we wrought the will of the Gentiles? He said here that when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. You say, okay, well, what does that have to do with me? What does that have to do with wine and so forth? Well, the first one he talks about may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in excess of wine. Excess of wine having to do with someone who's drunk. They, uh, when Jesus was on earth, they called him a wine-bibber. And the King James, Behold, a gluttonous man, a wine-bibber. The wine-bibber had to do with this excess of wine. Wine-o, falling down drunk, passed out drunk. Okay, uh, The one who goes on binges and all this kind of thing. Excess of wine. And somebody says, well, I know that's condemned. Yeah, yeah, you shouldn't be doing that. I know that's condemned. But it doesn't condemn just drinking it. Just drink a little bit and it'll be okay. Well, no. In fact, he keep on reading and he says no excess of wine. And he says revelings. Now, the word reveling is the person who has drunk wine and now they're just good and loose. Here's a person who has drunk, drink, he has drunk alcohol and now he is the one who has lost his inhibitions. This is the one dancing on the coffee table, lampshade on their head. This is the one that's 10 feet tall and bulletproof. This is the one, oh, I got to unwind. I'm going to have a good time. And, and they're, you know, carrying on and all this and, and yucking it up and all this and life of the party. Or they're, they're the life of the party or they're the ones that are crying in the corner because they're so miserable or they're wanting to fight you all the time. or what? That's the reveling person right there. Revelings. All right? Um, and then he says banquetings. Banquetings literally means a drinking party. Some versions say drinking party or a drinking. Well, you can't have a drinking without a drink, can you? And so that's what we find here. Uh, this this kind of drinking, this w- would be the one who, uh, you know, these are the sophisticated people, so-called. These are the ones, you know, we go out for the wine tasting, we go out for cocktails and just a social drink. And we go out and have one, and we just kind of, you know, nurse on that and so forth. And we say, oh, that's not a big deal, and that's not a problem. That's what men say. Well, remember, he says here that banquetings here is in the same category as the excess of wine. It's in the same category as revelings, okay, or it's in the same category as the lust of men. The, the, with the Gentiles, he said, when we walked in lasciviousness. Banquetings is in the same category as lasciviousness, in the same category as lust, in the same category as abominable idolatries. And so you, you can't tell me that, uh, well, if you just had a drink or one, just one little drink or if you just had a little bit, that won't be a problem and God doesn't care and God thinks it's okay. No, read First Peter 4 verse 3 and you'll see there is a difference and God doesn't uh, accept that. He condemns that and says don't be doing those kind of things. Don't act like the world. Come out of the world. Let me pause for a moment and remind you this program is brought to you by the Caneyville Church of Christ. Caneyville Church of Christ meets together on the Lord's Day at 10 a.m. for Bible study and 10.45 for morning worship and 5 in the afternoon for worship on the Lord's Day. We meet for Bible study Wednesday night at 7 as well. You'd be our honored guest if you come and be with us at any and every time that you can. We'd love to see you. I'd love for you to come and be with us to, to study God's Word. If you have any Bible questions, uh, we'd love to hear from you. If you have questions about what we do, why we do it, 
please let us know. We'd love to talk to you and love to study and love to answer your Bible questions. So bring an open Bible, bring an open mind when you come and you're with us. We meet right across the road from the Caneyville Bank, or well, Sacramento Bank now. We meet right across the road from the Sacramento Bank. It's in Caneyville. Uh, they're near the intersection of Highway 62 and Highway 79. And you'll be our honored guest if you come and be with us. We have a website available for you, CaneyvilleChurchOfChrist.com. We mentioned that earlier, as well as a Facebook page. And you can write to us. You can follow us on Facebook. You can like us and so forth. And we just have all kinds of things there available for you, for your study, and for your learning. If you'd like to have a Bible correspondence course, we can set that up. Or if you'd like to have a uh, just a private Bible study, I sit down together, we meet somewhere, and talk about God's Word. I'd love to do that. Call me, 589-4167. You can call me, you can text me. We can talk about God's Word. We can study and learn what God would have us to do and live in a way that God would have us to live. And certainly on this subject, like any other subject. So if you have any questions, And we can help you with this to learn, to study, to find out what God wants us to do and how God wants us to live. Please get a hold of me. Please, let's talk about this. Let's study from the Bible, the book of God. But we were talking about how in the New Testament, for example, 1 Peter 4, verse 3, how he had condemned uh, the drinking, even even what we would call social drinking, what we would call the minor stuff or the little stuff. Well, I'm not getting drunk. Oh, you know, that's the argument. Well, I'm not getting drunk. Now, I'm just going to drink a little bit. Well, he says don't do that even. You'll see that even back in the book of Proverbs, in Proverbs chapter 23. Sometimes, again, people say, well, now Proverbs 23 is talking about don't get drunk, like don't get raging drunk, falling down drunk. Well, yes, but also he did say don't look upon the wine when it is red and when it sparkles, when it moveth itself in the cup, when it moves right, when it goes down smoothly, some versions say. Well, he says don't look at it. And so that tells us right away, that's that's way before you get to drinking or being a falling down drunk. Yes, drunkenness is condemned in Proverbs 23 and don't think otherwise. But he says there in the first part, don't even look at it. Don't look at that wine. Don't even get it started. Don't begin. And he goes on and says, because at the last it bites like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Well, please understand there would be no at the last if there were not a first. So what he's saying is not, well, go ahead and drink. Just promise don't get drunk. What he's trying to do is prevent it from getting started. He prevents it by saying, don't look at it. He also is trying to prevent it by showing you where it goes. At the last, it bites like a serpent, stingeth like an adder. At the last, it's doing that, so don't even get this started. And it's interesting, it bites like a serpent and stings like an adder. That's not just something thrown out randomly. Um, What's happened is the serpent and the adder... It's interesting, the folks who know about this know that the serpent and the adder's venom attacks different parts of the body. And, of course, they're both poisonous, but it's two different types of poison. And so, be- between a serpent and an adder, if they go after their prey, one one's venom will work on the circulatory system so as to stop the heart. But the other venom works on the nervous system so as to paralyze you. And with both venoms then, the serpent or adder, either one, is able to then catch and capture and eat their prey. Whether it is the poison that affected the heart and stopped the heart, or it was the poison that affected the nervous system and and paralyzed it. Either way, that serpent's going to eat. Yeah, that snake is going to eat, I should say it that way. Either way, it's going to eat. Well, he's talking about that from the standpoint of that alcohol. It bites like a serpent and stings like an adder. Have you ever noticed that those who are affected by alcohol will what? Will generally have heart problems, circulatory problems, uh, whether it's the narrowing of the veins, narrowing of the arteries, or hardening of the arteries, and various problems with the circulatory system, or those will have, have nervous problems and things. People coming off of... Uh, alcohol, addicted to alcohol, and they come off of it, and they've got the shakes, they've got the DTs, see, they've got the shakes or the DTs because it's affected their nervous system, it's affected their brain, see, 
that alcohol affects your brain. Like I said, it, it can get to your brain in 30 seconds of swallowing. So it's already in the brain affecting the nervous system. and then it So what, what was said in Proverbs 23 is not a guess. It's not just flowery language. It's not just uh, something cutesy just to scare you. Ooh, I'm scared of a snake. The, there was a true medical side to it, if you will. There's a true uh, physical side to it and a, and a consequence to what was being said and a consequence to, to these effects of alcohol. And so let's not ignore that. And he says, because of this, don't even look at it. Because of these things, don't even get this started. And, and it's said there in, in, in Proverbs, it's said there in the book of First Peter, and it's said all the way through. And so I need to remember that. I need to understand that. Like I said, I know that, that even bringing this up, I know even talking about this subject, uh, I'm, I'm the lone wolf in a lot of ways because somebody says, oh, you're crazy and you can drink and, and people can drink and you just promise don't get drunk and everything will be all right and everything will go well and uh, you know, you're, just, you're just fooling yourself, you're kidding yourself and, and so forth. Well, no. All we have to do is open up our Bibles and read and study those words together. We can see this. We can see how important it is. See, it, it's dangerous to us. In, in the book of Proverbs 20 and verse 1, I just remember, I just think about that because he says wine is a mocker. It makes a mockery of you. And I think that's, that's much of what our problem today is, that, that we, the wine has mocked us. And we fool ourselves into thinking that everything's okay, everything's just fine, everything, don't worry about it. And the whole time, it's it's hurting us. The old statement is true that says that a man goes and a man takes a drink, and then a drink takes a drink, and then the drink takes the man. Wine is a mocker, and strong drink is raging. And whosoever, whoever it is, look in Proverbs twenty verse one, whosoever, whoever it is, that is deceived thereby, whoever it is, I don't care who it is, who. It could be anyone. You're not wise. If whoever deceived thereby is not wise, you're not a wise person. I want to tell you something. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be among those that God considers foolish. Do you? I don't want to be in that category. I don't want to be in a category that God considers that, that, that they have you know, some problem and, and uh, you know, now you're not wise. You're not a wise person. You're harming your, your body. You're harming your, your um, of course, your whole um, lifestyle. You're harming your influence. You can be harming your family. You can harm others. You, it, it, it takes a toll on you. Because that's the way any sin is. Any sin is going to take you. It's going to take your heart. It's going to take your money. It's just going to take your all. And that's what's happening. And just because it's legal uh, doesn't make it right either. You know, there's a lot of sins that today that are legal. And just because it's legal doesn't make it not sin. Uh, it's still sinful. It's still wrong, and I've shown you some of this. Now, I recognize we're, our time is fast coming to a close. I know there's people that'll say, well, what about this, and what about this verse, and what about... We can talk about those things as well. I recognize I didn't get to that, and it does deserve our attention, but we're fast coming to the end of our program, and so what I want to do at the, in this program is just lay that groundwork. What does the Bible says? Yes, the, the word wine is a general term, and I need to recognize that. In the Bible, it's a general term. And I need to understand, sometimes it means juice. And sometimes, and therefore I cannot just assume every time I read the word wine that it means alcohol. Sometimes it means juice. Sometimes it does mean alcohol. And then what has God said? And I've shown you what God has said concerning the alcohol side of things. And so I need to respect that. And I need to follow what the Lord said. And I need to stay away from it. Stay away from that which is going to harm me. It's going to harm my body. It's going to harm my influence. It's going to harm my brain. It's going to harm, uh, as a result, even, even my family and my children. It's a harmful, harmful thing. And I need to stay away from it. And so if, if there's anything we can do, if we can help you, if we can study on this subject some more, if we can do that, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. love to study with you about God's Word. I'm so thankful for this time. Until next time, Lord willing, we bid you good day.